mind keeping that close. Why yes, it's quite comfortable in here. But when it's open, there's a bit of a draft. You do realize that was a joke, don't you? I didn't expect my hero to lack a sense of humor. Maybe I'd grown quite fond of it. The iron bars, the pattern of squares and... Well, I guess that's it. But I do like squares. Does this town look different at all to you? Yes, I bet Sigrid is still hectoring Calvo like a pet dog. And speaking of which, it's good to see Stump is still alive too. I forget how he got his name. I think it's because he's always curled about like a stump. My name is Zora Fairchild, although it was never meant to be ironic. I was once very much a child and very much fair. So fair, in fact, that the divine saw it fit to punish me with a smart and unviable face. It's always easier to blame the gods for such things, isn't it? don't make things awkward. I am more than comfortable with my own burnt skin. It is a burn after all. I've tried washing it to no avail. But it hides the scars. That's a good thing. Now, I wasn't always comfortable with it, but living in a cage tends to alter your perspective. No, necromancers tend to disapprove of having their specimens damaged. I should know. This is the 11th necromancer who's enslaved me. And all 11 have been as delicate as a lord with his finest furs. It makes me so sad to disappoint him so. I think this last one was quite excited with his find until he brushed back my hair. <sighs> I've seen that look on more than enough men to recognize it. Oh, I am. I do enjoy it. There is never a shortage of wizards who like to use this pass as their lair, nor a shortage of heroes who travel through it. Not violent, caring, but not servile. I could go on and on. Are you sure? You sound like the sixth hero who saved me. Aggressive, but impatiently so. That one had barely unlocked the cage before unloosening his belt. Bandits, wizards, heroes and alchemists, oh, and skeletons! They used to be all four. Ah, the scars came from adventuring. Most of them are barely visible, thanks to the one. From a distance it may appear to be a dash of pain. A girl's attempt to look menacing. Upon closer inspection, you'll see it's a mark of a burn. When I was a flowering young maiden, I once had many suitors. 
men would travel great distances to see the diamond of Riverwood. My sister, on the other hand, had no suitors to speak of. She was far more talented than I, a mage worthy of studying at the College of Winterhold. What she was not, unfortunately, was pretty. We'd fight often about the smallest of things, although they were never really about who was supposed to wash the clothes or sweep the floor. It was always about her envy and my lack of compassion. Eventually, one argument got rough. The hand she struck me with was cloaked in fire. No, I deserved it. Not the flames, but the slap. Make no mistake, I was a real bitch. Beauty tends to make monsters of us all. She didn't intend to burn me, of course, no. Just all of that anger, that rage, manifested itself into fire. Now, but not then. Oh no, I was sufficiently devastated. My beauty was all they had. It defined me. But it was the ugliness that hurt the most. The way people, not just men, looked at me. Always with that cringe. They all do it. Even polite ones can't help themselves. No matter how hard they try to disguise it. When you're beautiful, every word is met with a smile. When it's gone, the whole world is shrouded in darkness. I couldn't loathe my sister for what she did. Not now that I know her pain. It's not just for show. Although the necromancers seem to think so, nobody takes me seriously. Huh, but when my weapon of choice was an amulet of Mara, then the boys were quite certain of my intentions. Even if that was just for show. It took some time to get a hang of it. My body did pay quite a price for my lessons. I have more scars than skin now, I'm afraid. Yet you'll find I'm a capable fighter. And if it's adventure you're sick, my lord, I am but your humble servant. The fury to your Holger, the Edward to your Barenzea, the house girl to your Jarl. So is my lord suggesting I become a jester? <laughs> I think the surprise will be all theirs, and the laughter. Just one. When I was little, I often went out into the woods to collect flowers. It was there that I found the dirtiest, most flea-ridden mongrel in all of Skyrim. He was also very adorable. The way his fur hung over his tender grey eyes, I called him Sir Cuddles. And I was in love. My mother was furious, yet my father had a soft spot for his girls, so he tried to find a practical reason for why cuddles couldn't stay. 
He pointed to how sick the dog was and how dangerous diseases were in the wild. I cried all night, burying my face in my hands. I never even noticed that my sister was gone. It was hours before dawn when the door clicked open and I saw my sister with a healthy Sir Cuddle strolling on behind her. She spent last of her savings on a hawk feather and a charred skiver hide and even brewed the potion herself. <laughs> Silly me, my instincts were to hug the dog. <sighs> but looking back, it's the memory of my sister's compassion that I truly covet. If you enter from the north, there is a soul game trap that hits you with a swath of old-fashioned destruction magic. It can give you a severe tickling if you aren't careful. I get more annoyed than hurt. I'm sorry, my hero, but you have someone with you. And out on the road it can get quite crowded. Alright. What do you need? You sure? Well, alright. Probably tie my head on somewhere else. Never know where my stomach will take me. Well man. You have my steel. I'm right here. All right, I'll carry this for you. I wonder if you remember still alive. Our armor could use a bit of polish. Don't let him hear a weapon though, he only has so many fingers. Need a ride? Where do you want to go? Climb and back and we'll be off. You ever met one of them cats? Khajiit, I think they call themselves. I hear there's whole countries full of them down south. My toes are numb from the cold more often than not. <sighs>
so much time with you. You forget how deep the rest of the world is. The sky just goes on forever. Purchase a bottle of my genuine farmer blood elixir. Greetings, honored friend. Could I interest you in some fine jewelry? Perfect. Melting this down will give me plenty of gold for those necklaces I started. Safe travels, Landstrider. Yes? Protect yourself in right like a body armor from the enemy agents. All the food! It would be such a waste not to eat it! Of course my hero will have to eat most of it. I'm watching my way. Anuriel seems to think that seeing me on the streets might bolster the city's morale. Milady, there could be agents of the Empire looking for an opportunity like that to have you killed. Are you willing to take that risk? No. Of course, you're right, Unmid. I'll stay here for now. Keep your eyes open. So, is this what it's come to? You'd have your own flesh and blood hanged just to solidify your grip as the next yard. If that's what it will take, then so be it. What's become of us? We used to be inseparable. Always fighting back to back and letting nothing stand in our way. You've changed, brother. And not for the better, I'm afraid. I've done what I needed to do to keep Mother happy. It doesn't matter what I really believe. You've done what you've had to for yourself, not for mother. Wise up, Next Imperial I see the storm is will rise and it will blow through here with all its fury. It's time to choose a side. On midnight, sweet. Are we still meeting later for combat training? Of course. Your training isn't complete yet. I'll look forward to it then. No, oh, come to gloat, have we? To poke fun at the Jarl's youngest son? Because I did something not a soul in this blood-stained house of war has the backbone to do. Dared to speak my mind. I dared speak of the Empire and the lies that have been spread by Ulfric, the leader of the Stormcloaks. 
Now my mother stripped me of my heritage and incarcerated me here like a common criminal, and my brother has all but disowned me. Be wary what you say around here, friend. You'll find not all take kindly to insurrection. I've been looking, but I'm convinced Ulfric only cares about one thing. Ulfric. He's ordained himself the future High King of Skyrim, and steps on anyone that gets in his way. He's begun a rebellion against those that wish to eradicate the worship of Talos, and uses it as his rallying cry. His cause may be true, but the man is a lie. All he holds in his heart is lust for the throne. Mm hmm. Dragging those muddy boots in here. This is the Jarl's keep for Debella's sake. Oh no, and an adventurer of all things. You're not diseased, are you? By the gods, I just got over that case of ataxia, and now this. On midnight, sweet. Are we still meeting later for combat training? Of course. Your training isn't complete yet. I'll look forward to it then. Maybe you can't see it. But there's all kinds of dust and dirt floating around your body. Or maybe you're a mage like Melandra and you just make all the dirt invisible and I don't see it right away. Oh gods, what if you've already infected me? My wrists. I I think I have hell joint. Or or rot limb. Why would you do that? What is wrong with you? What have you given everyone here Chanthrax? Oh no. I think I'm coming down with a fever. I think I need to lie down. Are we still meeting later? Oh no. That's just what a drogger would do. What's happening to me? Your training isn't complete yet. A priest. I need a priest. How many hours is it until midnight? I don't know if I can wait that long. I'm dead, I see. The girl's maid. If you want to talk to someone important, try the steward. I just set the table and sweep the floors. I don't even live here. Normally maids sleep in the servants' quarters, but I usually stay at the Temple of Mara. I won't sleep on a bed of any kind. They're a perfect hiding place for a hive of yellow ticks. It's not paranoia. I was bedridden for the last three weeks with ataxia. My employer, I, I mean the Yarrow, was very angry. There was so much dust. Before that, it was the rattles. I got too close to one of Valandria's jars and inhaled some kind of spore. Before I got the rattles, it was rock joint. And before that, it was collywobbles. In the brief time I've been made at Miss Vale Keep, I've gotten damp worm in the droops, whitbane and witherfoot. I've survived this long through perseverance, not paranoia. I dust the floors and wipe the tables, wash the dishes and change the linens. I make sure to clean every nook, cranny, crack, and corner of this place, and sometimes it's still not enough. Are you joking? A little dirt never hurt anyone? Tell that to everyone who died in the Crimson Plague. All it takes is one rat in a crowded area to infect an entire city. One little spore flying up your nose. That's the really frightening part. Ingen Blackbriar told me we eat and breathe poisons every day. Same things that give us life could kill us. By Izmir's beard, that's the scariest sodding thing I've ever heard. What she says is true, then every meal, every breath is like gambling with your life. I wish I could cook all my food in a stew of cure disease potions, but I can't afford the ingredients. Could you please stop declaring that the city is safe for the Yarl to roll? You and I both It depends. The dust tends to gather around the corners, and that's easy to sweep up. 
The court likes to feast, but nobility generally keeps the dining area clean. Thankfully, my duties don't extend to the barracks. The rug is a different story. It's not as easy to spot dust and dirt, and even harder to get out stains. Well, Andrea offered to make some sort of liquid subconcoction out of goat fat and lavender, but thankfully she forgot about it. Of course, that's part of the problem. That wizard is always forgetting about her experiments. It's almost like she gets halfway done and then it turns into something else. I have no idea what is and isn't trash, but the flies sure do. They'll find a rotting piece of meat and lay their eggs. And come dawn, the keep will be riddled with maggots inching their way across the floor. You're right to be scared. I may have recovered from the collie wobbles, but that doesn't mean I'm not contagious. According to Elgrim, the main symptoms are sluggishness, shortness of breath, joint pain, and weakness. If you start to feel any of those, I would head down to the temple. Or if you've got the coin, Elgrim's elixirs. He's the local apothecary. Thank you. Finally, someone who's sympathetic. But it's not just the messes. You can't see disease. You can't touch it. It's just... there. It'd be a lot easier to avoid it if it crawled around on eight legs like a spider. Although I'd probably have a lot more nightmares. Okay, just be quick. I think my nose is starting to run, and I'd rather not wipe it on my hands. It's her crazy experiments. I can't go near her counter without catching something or other. And the way she hoards things and then just leaves them out for days. I... I just don't understand it. What does a Jarl even need a court wizard? Still meeting later for Mages can't be trusted. You ever read about the Thracian Plague? It was created by a Slowed, but I bet my life he was also a mage. How would you know? Are we just expected to take Melandria at her word? That's what's so scary. I trust the Jarl, the steward, and the housecarl, but what do they know about magic? The court wizard could be doing harmless research, or applying to kill the lot of us, and no one would know the difference. Stay clean. Out of my way. The son of the Jarl has no time for idle conversation with travelers. Every day the threat of exile from Riften draws closer for myself and my family. Who knows how many spies the Empire has sent into our midst already. We're at war. This isn't the time for hospitality. Thank goodness Mother is keeping a level head about everything. If my brother Sailand had his way, we'd be flying Imperial colors by now. Can you believe that fool had the audacity to speak of his love for the Empire in the plaza? He expects us to drop our defenses and greet them with open arms. To dialogue with them rather than defend our homeland by spilling their blood. He's a traitor, plain and simple. Had I been sitting on the throne, he'd be hanging from the gallows for his sympathies toward the Empire. If you must know, I was practicing in the yard when the guard I was sparring with fainted when I specifically told him to duck. My blade bit right into the stonework next to the keep and needed serious repairs. Thankfully, our smith, Balamond, works wonders. In fact, if you'd fetch my blade from him, I'd be most appreciative. Thank you. Do hurry, please. All right, then.
Come to see Balaman perform miracles with steel, eh? What brings you to Balaman today? Repair? Purchase? Lazy good-for-nothing, isn't he? Sent you down here when I'm a stone's throw from the keep. Here's the sword. Tell Harald to stop slaying walls, and perhaps his blade will stay in better condition. <laughs> Remember, nothing but genuine fire salts will do. The forge knows the difference. Nothing like the smell of a white-hot blade, eh? The finest weapons and armor. Remember, nothing but genuine fire sauce will do. The Forge knows the difference. Harald, I have need of you. Yes, Mother. What is it? The situation with the sewers beneath the city. I hear people have entered this place and have gone missing. Do you know of this? Yes, I've heard such things. Anuriel assures me they're just fabrications, and there's nothing down there save a few stray skeever. Well, make sure we keep the patrols out night and day, just to be certain. Anuriel, a word, please. Yes, my lady? It's been brought to my attention that the poison, known as Skuma, may be present in our city. What do you know of this? I believe it to be a falsehood perpetrated by the Empire in order to weaken the citizens' confidence in your ability to rule. Excellent. Then there's no need to devote any resources to stopping it. Thank you, Anuriel. That will be all. I see you still have the run of the place, traitor. <coughs> Come now, brother. Don't act all high and mighty. I know you could care less about the war one way or another. The things you say are just an act to please mother. Perhaps. Perhaps not. I'm disappointed in you, brother. You had it all. You had it all and your mouth cost you everything. At least I've chosen a side instead of acting like a spectator. One day, you'll be forced to make a choice. Welcome to Mistvale Keep. I'm Jarl Layla's steward, Anuriel. Out of my way. The son of the Jarl has no time for idle conversation with travelers. Took your sweet time getting it to me. Here you go, for your trouble. Combat training? Of course. Your training isn't complete yet. I'll look forward to it. Now, if you'll excuse me. I get so tired sometimes, but I'm not satisfied until I finish every task in my journal. You understand, don't you? As Ripton steward, I'm afraid I can provide only limited assistance, but speak your mind. If you're here to report any instances of corruption, be confident that we're handling these rumors accordingly. As steward, I serve as an intermediary between the Jarl and her subjects. I also handle the less important and day-to-day -day policies that affect daily life in Riften. Lately, I've had my hands full suppressing these ridiculous accusations of corruption in the Keep. There are those that believe the Jarl does nothing for this city, that it's corrupt and run by the Blackbriar family. I can assure you that this is entirely false. We are fully in control of everything. Maven Blackbriar is the owner of the largest and most profitable business in all Skyrim, the Blackbriar Meadery. We're pleased to have her in Riften, 
She brings stability, opportunities for employment, and strategic value to our city. I'd hardly call them a guild. Parole. More like I have unorganized been. rabble. Yes, mother. In fact, I wouldn't say the they were a threat at all. No, our resources should be spent on preparations for invasion. Do you know of this? Yes, I've heard such things. Anuriel assures me they're just fabrications. Excellent. You've done us a great service. Here is your reward. Well, make sure we keep the patrols out night and day, just to be certain. You're welcome in Riften, as long as you continue to obey our laws. Welcome to Riften, traveler. I hope the road fared well for you. While I feel Ulfric's cause is just, my concern is for the people of the Rift. How can they continue to lead their already meager lives with dark clouds looming overhead? My heart goes out to them. If only our coffers were deeper, I could protect them as they were my own family. With the Stormcloaks at his back, Ulfric's poised to rid Skyrim of the Empire's forces and invalidate our involvement with the White Gold Concordat. Many have died taking up arms for this cause. I fear that the land will be stained with blood for years to come. Surely you're aware of the great war between the Imperials and the Elves who called themselves the Eldmeri Dominion? When the smoke cleared, the White Gold Concordat was signed. It was supposedly a treaty aimed at establishing peace within the Empire. One of the terms of the treaty was the outlawing of worship to Talos. To the Stormcloaks, this was viewed as the moment when the Empire became unworthy of the allegiance of any true Nord. We're all eager to see them brought to justice. Maven Blackbriar has assured me that they're being dealt with appropriately. As one of our city's most influential citizens, she's taken it upon herself to oversee their incarceration. Sadly, they're proving elusive, but I have confidence that Maven won't give up until this city has been rid of them all. Good journey to you. As Yar Leila's house guard, I would ask that you maintain a respectable distance from her at all times. Ulfric's a bloody hero. I don't think there's a worthy Nord alive who dare argue the point. He's taking the Empire to task and making them answer for their crimes. I don't think I'll be content until Ulfric sits upon the throne of Skyrim with the ashes of the Concordat at his feet. Indeed, there have been multiple attempts on the Jarl's life. We're not certain if it's the Dark Brotherhood or simply Imperial sympathizers. We've also had run-ins with spies attempting to probe our security for weaknesses. I work with the city guard to make certain they fail. At the end of the day, I'm the last line of defense for the Jarl. I will not allow her to fall. I'm keeping my eye on you. Did you have some sort of official business here? Everyone knows the Thieves' Guild uses the old sewer system beneath Riften as their hideout. I'd go down there myself, but that would leave Yara Leila unprotected. Liars and bastards. Every one of them. I'd have their heads on a pike if it wasn't for the war effort. All I need is a dozen men, and we could march into the Ratwee and burn them out like rodents. Stormcloaks won't have it, though. Too busy keeping the Imperial forces at bay. I'm keeping my eye on you. Did we have an appointment? No. It 
Was it delivery? I can't remember. Yes, I could use some help with that. An assistant, perhaps? No, no, no. Maybe a familiar... No, too messy. Well, at any rate, organization is not my strong suit. Not at all. I need as much help as I can get. In fact, if you could retrieve a few things for me, I could start on my next set of experiments. As you can imagine, I tend to forget things often. Leave things around. I really must learn to put these things away. What I need is my Dwemer Stirring Spoon, my Orichalcum Ingot, and my Grand Soul Gem. In fact, I could use them immediately. Bring those items back to me, and I'll be happy to experiment on you. No, no, that isn't right. I'd be happy to reward you. Excellent. I can't wait. Well, why are you still standing here? Oh, right. You need to know where they are. That would help. Let's see. Last time I used the Dwemer Spoon was at my dear friend Bodhi's house in Iverstead. Felstar Farm, I believe it's called. The Orichalcum Ingot should still be at Winterhold at the Frozen Hearth Inn. I don't know why I didn't just take it with me. And last is the Soul Gem. I left that one in Windhelm at the White File Alchemy Shop. It was a good trade, too. Oh well. Someone actually interested in what I'm doing. Amazing! Well, allow me to explain. My experimentation involves a magical construct and a reagent that will allow the construct to maintain a field of permanent harmonic energy. Aha! So, you're a student of theoretical applied harmonics. Putting aside Ralston's constant of universal inversion for a moment, how would you approach the problem? Draw the harmonic energy into the reagent, or allow it to generate its own field? Calipers? That's utterly ridiculous. Maybe long ago you could just find calipers in every household across Tamriel, but not anymore. Hold on. You've given me a brilliant idea. Just as calipers hold materials in place, a soul siphon can hold magic fields in place. Genius! And I'm sure you've completely worked out how to counteract complete dimensional collapse, right? Are you completely insane? Swallow a soul gem? That has to be the most brilliant and unexpected solution I've heard in a long time. It solves all of my problems and keeps the field stable. Now all I need... Wait, what were we talking about? Winterhold, you want the college there. They teach quite a bit. Spells and incantations, for those with the talent to cast them.
Okay. Now, where did I put those spiders? How can I help a brother not? Hey, you're not supposed to be down here. Official business only. Oh, my mistake then. Sorry, you can go on ahead. Staying out of trouble, kinsman? Have you come to gawk at me, or is this a social call? Look, we all have our flaws. Mine is that women can't get enough of me. So I had this little affair going on while I was betrothed to a beautiful girl named Svidi. Well, 
She finds out and she tells her brother Wolfer that her brother attacks me with a knife. I mean, I had to defend myself. Exactly. Now I have to stare at these bars for eight months. Can you believe it? I was about to let that wench marry into the richest family in Ripton, and this is how she repays me. I'd do anything to have that whore's head on a platter. All I need to know is where she is. Amusing. When speaking of the Blackbriars, only one thought should spring to mind. We are not to be trifled with. Help us, you end up rich. Cross us, and you'll end up a memory. Is that enough information for you? Ah, and let me guess. He wants his horse. Well, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. See, I don't really outright own Frost. That is correct. You see, Frost belongs to the Blackbriar estate. Technically, everything in the estate is owned by my mother, Maven. My plan was to take the horse from our lodge and deliver it to Latrush at the stables. Obviously, that didn't exactly work out as I'd planned. Still, I don't want to cross Latrush. Tell you what, steal the horse and deliver it, and you can have the second half of the payment. Sure, take advantage of the guy in jail. Okay, fine, I can make the deal sweeter. I obviously don't have anything here, but there's a hidden stash in the lodge, and I did manage to hold on to the key. Take it. Uh. Ah, finally. Someone besides the stupid guards to talk to. I'm not stealing anything. Besides, some jail time isn't going to make me roll over and play dead. Visit me anytime. I'm not going anywhere soon.
Let me guess. Someone stole your sweet roll. Is it dragons? If it's a bed you need, talk to Kirava in the B and Bar. She'll set you up. 